it's time for another amazing chemistry video with Mr. Stapleton. Hi guys, welcome to my first uh, teach board video. I'm just going to be doing a quick one hopefully which will help you with some revision for the analytical techniques test. Um, so today I'm just going to be going through atomic absorption spectroscopy. Okay, so this is the final topic uh, that we normally look at in analytical techniques. And uh, what I'm going to be going through is just uh, basically the difference between um, emission versus absorption spectroscopy. And then I'm just going to um, basically show you some of the um, things that we can do with atomic absorption spectroscopy, which is really, really useful. So first of all, I'm going to give you a, a key phrase, which is one that you really, really, really need to remember, and that's the basis for atomic absorption spectroscopy. Okay, and the principle is that each element absorbs and emits its own unique wavelength. Okay, now the key is this one here, okay, that it is unique. Okay, so the um, wavelength that copper will absorb and emit is different from the wavelength that strontium will absorb and emit. Now what we're talking about in terms of absorbing and emitting wavelengths of radiation is this. Okay, um, if you've got um, some electrons, all right, just along here, we've got some energy. We've got some electrons that sit here. This is energy along this side, okay? And these electrons, okay, these are sitting here in what we call their ground state, okay? Now what happens, okay, is that these electrons, when we supply energy into them, these electrons actually jump up to this new state. Okay, and this is called an excited state. So when we supply energy in, we get this electron jumping up all right, to its excited state right there. Now, what happens is that that electron does not want to stay there in that excited state. So what it's going to do is it's going to decay back to its original state. So this um, getting rid of energy here is called decay. Now, that decay of energy can only happen if it actually gets rid of some form of energy. So what it actually does is it gets rid of energy over here in the form of a photon, okay? Now, a photon is something that's about visible light, okay? So we can see that energy that's being given off by the electron when it decays back to its original state. And each element absorbs and emits its own unique wavelength. So the energy that this electron um, absorbed to go to an excited state is unique, and the energy it gives off in the form of a photon or visible light is unique as well. Okay, so when we're talking about spectroscopy, okay, uh, there's two types that we can look at. Okay, the first one over here is emission. All right. So emission spectroscopy is where we look at the um, photon given off. Okay. If we're talking about absorption spectroscopy, we're looking at the energy that's absorbed or taken in. All right. So um, it's really important to understand uh, that there are two different types. For year 12, what we're just going to focus on mainly is the absorption spectroscopy, but you can use both of these as a form of uh, qualitative analysis to determine what something is. Because if you determine what energy an atom absorbs, it will be unique for each particular atom, so you can determine what it is. All right. And that's the main reason we use emission spectroscopy. What we're going to focus on is absorption spectroscopy. Okay, so if we look at the principles of atomic absorption spectroscopy, uh, what we're going to be looking at is the um, device or machine that we actually use to perform it. So um, first thing we have in atomic absorption spectroscopy is a flame, okay? Um, so we've got some sort of device here, okay, which has a sample, okay, that we're trying to work out here, a sample, and that is atomized or vaporized into the flame. So normally what we do is we dissolve up our sample in a suitable solvent, okay, and then we inject it through our flame, all right, that atomizes it, so we just get the atoms that we're wanting to look at. What we do is we shine a light through our flame, okay, so we've got our flame here which will atomize the sample, and we need a hollow cathode lamp over here, okay, so this is a hollow cathode lamp. A cathode is um, like a positive metal ion, okay? And so what we're doing is we've got a filament inside here, all right? So there's a little filament inside here, a bit like a light globe. We're passing electricity through that. 
Now the atoms inside that hollow cathode lamp will actually absorb um, the energy that they're bringing and then they emit energy as well. So what we use, and this is the key for atomic absorption spectroscopy when we're talking about wanting to detect a particular sample, is that our hollow cathode lamp is the same element that we are trying to um, actually determine the concentration of or find out. So if you've got a sample and you're trying to find out if there's copper in there, you'll use a copper hollow cathode lamp. If you're to try and determine if it's sodium, you'd use a sodium cathode lamp. Okay? So that cathode lamp is absorbing energy. It's emitting photons in the form of light. Okay? They will come out of that hollow cathode lamp and come through our vaporized sample. Now, if we've got the atoms of what we're trying to determine inside our vaporized sample, some of that light will get absorbed. Um, and it will only be the atoms that we're looking at because of the unique wavelength coming out from that hollow cathode lamp. Now normally what will happen is you've got all different forms of light around because you've got visible light. And so the next thing that they will put in is something called a monochromator. A monochromator all right, selects one wavelength. Okay, selects one wavelength. And so that, what that means is the wavelength that we're trying to um, determine or um, measure for our specific element, we select that through our monochromator. Okay, so the sample comes through here, some of it gets absorbed in the flame. Our monochromator selects which wavelength we're trying to actually measure. And then this comes across here to the final part, which is a detector. Okay, sometimes you might have an amplifier in there as well. Okay, but our detector over here determines if any of the light was actually absorbed. Okay, so in, in essence, this is both a qualitative and a quantitative um, form of um, analytical techniques because what you're doing is you're determining firstly if there is any sample in your flame. Okay, so if the absorbance reading that comes out here at the end with the detector is less than 100, some of the light has been absorbed by your sample. Okay. Then you can work out how much of the sample there is actually in there because you can determine by plotting against um, standard solutions the concentration. So I'm going to show you what that looks like over on this side. Okay, so over on this side here, if we draw up a graph, okay, uh, we're going to do absorbance versus concentration. Normally for um, these sorts of calibration graphs, we're doing concentration in terms of parts per million or parts per billion. Okay, so down the bottom here we've got our concentration, in this case we're just going to go parts per million and we're going to have our absorbance up here. Normally it's as a percentage because you determine the percentage of light that's been absorbed. So what we would do is we would take maybe four or five um, standard solutions, so they're solutions of known concentration and purity. And what we would do is we would put these through our atomic absorption spectroscopy machine. Right? We would vaporize them into the flame. We would determine how much light is absorbed by those standard solutions, and we would plot the calibration graph. Okay? So we might have our first one here, second one here, third, fourth, fifth, like that, and we put in our line of best fit. Okay? Now, your line of best fit should go through the origin, through here because you would expect that with a zero concentration, none of your light would be absorbed. If it doesn't, all right, if it doesn't go through the origin, it's an example of a systematic error, which would be something to do with your, um, your actual spectroscopy machine. So what we would then do is put our sample through here, vaporize it, all right, determine how much light is absorbed, and we would plot that onto our graph. So let's say, for example, we got an absorbance reading of about 40%. So we'd have a look here at about 40%. There's the 40 grade. We'd bring that across to our um, line of best fit, bring it straight down here, okay? And we would determine our concentration. That's how you use your calibration curve. Um, now in the exam, what they'll probably um, do is award two marks for this. So they'll give you one mark for actually stating the concentration, but they'll also give you another mark for putting your um, actual value on the graph and using that to determine your concentration. So that's what we use atomic absorption spectroscopy for, to determine what is in a sample, okay, and then how much of it there is. So it's both qualitative and quantitative. The key thing that you need to remember is that each element absorbs and emits its own unique wavelength. Sometimes I put extended response questions in, and that would be always the first thing that you, you start with, okay? So 
My advice is that you maybe go back, have a look at this again. You don't need to be able to draw the diagram of the atomic absorption spectroscopy machine, right? but you do need to be able to understand um, how that electron goes up to an excited state, what happens when it decays back to its bottom ground state by emission of a photon. You need to then be able to talk about um, what happens within the atomic absorption spectroscopy machine, about how the sample is vaporized. It absorbs light from that hollow cathode lamp, which is the same material we're trying to determine. Okay? And then you need to be able to use a calibration graph here to be able to determine your final concentration. All right, hopefully you've liked this. Hopefully it makes sense. As always, if you've got any questions, just ask. Thanks, guys.